And then the, all the owners walked to the other side of the building, probably 30 feet away, and the dogs just stayed. Well, what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to call one dog at a time. And I've seen it before, and it's really a wonderful experience. And just the, watching 30 dogs just sitting there next to each yeah. other, paying attention, was just, it's, it's something you'll never forget. Oh boy, that's dangerous. <laughs> um, and somebody forgot to tell this guy, when you call your dog, just call it by name. I mean, don't do the whistle and come in, all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nobody told him, and he was the very first one. Oh, no. oh my God, yeah. All of them. <laughs> all of them. It was pandemonium. It was the funniest thing ever. Actually, I take that back. One dog stayed. One dog. <laughs> but not her. <laughs> but not her. Yeah, no. No. Not Delilah. Yeah, we cool. went to a show on uh, Friday at, the, at track, you know, lots and lots of people. And it was for our training people. And she wait, I took her, and uh, she just did wonderful. You know, I would sit her you know, 30, 40 feet away and just go about my business. And she would just sit there watching and just yeah. staying, you know, as long as I told her to. And, um, but as soon as Buffy, Can another dog, get a picture and of that? her, she, um, there, were, there were two of them, and I had her sitting. And so Cameron, the owner, took Buffy oh, wait, down here. there and sat her next to him. And I go, oh, I know what's going to happen here. Could you? Even though I had told her to stay, as soon as she, he called Buffy, she came too. And I knew she would. She just can't. But if I call her first, everything's fine. So, anyway, long story short, she's still in training, but way, way better she used to be. It's like, what did you start? Doing? You haven't started yet, have you? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I know, I know. So I, this is a recipe for disaster, by the way. Uh, We're getting a picture. I'll post a picture if I can. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Thank you. What's this? Divine October Bazaar. Well, it's October and we're bizarre, so what? I don't get it. Ha uh ha. -huh. No, October 13th and 14th, Friday and Saturday, uh, from 10 to 4 here. Be crafts and arts and bakes, baked goods and all kinds of stuff. So 513 Barth Avenue in Richland. So anybody at home, tell your friends. We'll put it on, on social media, all that kind of stuff. So anything else you need to add? Yes, next Sunday, uh, if everybody could stay just a little late after services, um, we're going to set up the tables and move them around and see what's going to fit where so that we make sure that we have appropriate tables and numbers and if we can add more people than we can. Then if we you go. have big questions, talk to Carol. Yeah, Carol. Carol's the, <laughs> Carol's the key. <laughs> Oops. Okay. It's warm up. All right. So yeah, so if anybody wants to know good dog training, you know, come to us, we'll tell you where to go. <laughs> never mind. We'll, them we'll do that too, probably, but never mind. Uh, we do have a couple of painters saints by the name of John Lennon and George Carvel. Car oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm divesting myself of clothing. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> too much. <laughs> too much. <laughs> too much. <laughs> and John said, <laughs> why in the world are we here? I don't know. <laughs> Surely not, not to live in pain and fear. Oh, no. Why on earth are we there? Embarrassment. <laughs> when you're everywhere, come get your share. Uh, we're here, we're there, we're everywhere. And George, by and large, language is a tool for concealing the truth. Yeah. <laughs> George, George, George. <laughs> these are not, I'm not doing these ones first. I'm doing all of this other stuff. First. Well, that's the order you had them in the bag. Well, I know, but that's not the order that I do them in. So, all right. Um, 50 ways to recycle fruitcake. Very thin pieces of fruitcake make environmentally, environmentally safe fly strips. Huh. <laughs> uh, the Snickers bar introduced in 1930 by, I did? Oh. No, well, no, maybe not. I, I introduced in 1930 by Eminem Mars is named after the Mars family's favorite horse, oh. Snickers. Oh. And the Tootsie Roll was named after the daughter the Tootsie. The daughter Tootsie, that's right. Oh. Uh, the great man is he who does not lose his child's heart. Yeah. True. I agree True. with that. <laughs> One thousand percent. I don't know. Where are you? I don't know. I'm here. I'm here. Get used to it. You're here, you're there, you're everywhere. Possessions are usually diminished by possession. <laughs> <laughs> Nietzsche.
Frederick Nietzsche. Uh, great blunders are often made, large one, uh, like large ropes of a multitude of fibers. Mm. Yeah. I like that too. <laughs> Excuse me. To really enjoy the better things in life, <coughs> you have to stop coughing. One must first experience the things uh, they are better than. Mm. <sighs> Just like coffee. If you pick up a starving dog and make him prosperous, he will not bite you. This is the principal difference between dog and men. <laughs> More bad jokes. They're great. Uh, why did Cinderella get kicked off the soccer team? She kept w running away from the ball. Oh, 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 terrible, 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 terrible. Uh, first dragon, am I too late for dinner? Second dragon, yes, everyone's eaten. <laughs> <laughs> Who weighs two tons and went to, to the ball wearing glass slippers? This is so stupid, I have to do it. Cinder elephant. <laughs> I know it's bad, but this is, I like this one actually. Why did Robin Hood's men hate living in Sherwood Forest? It only had one little John. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Lots of trees. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a bunch of uh, uh, kids, four to eight years old, and they were asked, what does... Four to eight years old? Four to eight four years old. Four <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I'll just wait. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Terry, age four. Love is what makes you smile when you're tired. Aww. Chrissy, age six. Love is when you go out to eat and give somebody most of your French fries without making them give you any of theirs. Aww. Cute. Okay, this one I didn't know. This is, and you know, like I said, you, you come to the Divine Fellowship to learn stuff, right? right. <laughs> Whatever. Useless. Why do ships and aircraft use May Day as their call for help? Hmm. Comes from a French word, May Days, meaning help me, and it is pronounced approximately May Day. Oh, wow. Hmm. I thought there was some event happening on May Day, that, on May 1st, that. I don't hmm? think so. Not that I know of. Who knows? Stories get twisted. Two blondes living in Oklahoma were sitting on a bench talking, and one blonde says to the other, which do you think is further away, Florida or the moon? <laughs> the other blonde turns and says, hello, can you see Florida? <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to do that one. All right. Teacher's pet. On the last day of kindergarten, all the children uh, brought presents for their teacher. The florist's son handed the teacher a gift. She shook it, held it up, and said, I bet it's some flowers. Well, that's right, shouted the little boy. Then the candy store owner's daughter handed the teacher a gift. She held it up, shook it, and said, I know what this is. It's a box of candy. That's right, shouted the little girl. The next gift was from a liquor store owner's son. The teacher held it up and saw that it was leaking. She touched a drop with her fingers and tasted it. Is it wine? Well, no, the boy answered. The teacher touched another drop to her tongue. Is it champagne? She asked. No, the boy answered. Well, what is it? A puppy. A puppy. A puppy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's awful. I know. I know. Taste it one more time to make sure. You would have known the first. 
48. Yeah. Boy, okay. Little boy's 48 years old. You know, I was having a really, really bad day the other day. I mean, nothing went right. Everything was wrong. Yeah, there's no stuff going on. I know, I know. <laughs> and, and I mean, it was just, it was just a terrible day. I mean, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. you help me with that? Yeah. You help me with that? And then I remembered that I, it was, it had to have been my upbringing. And I mean, I was beat up as a kid, and all this crap happened. And, uh, <laughs> 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 Don't you love it? <laughs> We've been going to do that one for weeks, and just haven't really gotten right. Do it again. Do it again. I want to hear it. This is. I got this for Make my sure birthday. Awesome. <laughs> Everybody needs one of these. Yes, yes, but not that one. She's guarding it. Yeah. <laughs> Stereo. Stereo. I know. I know. I know. Okay, so we share. And then what happened? And then what happened? And then he woke up. And, and then I woke fine. up. And yeah. Yeah. Everything was fine. <laughs> what are we going to do with this thing? I was thinking the same thing. If I leave, I'm not sure. She's Tell you what, you, tr you get down and leave, and I'll hold this until you get to the other end of the room, and then okay. we'll see what happens. Okay. <laughs> Don't make her. Down. Yeah. <laughs> if she breaks, we're in big trouble. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, oh, my goodness, where to start? <clears throat> Let's start with a prayer. This one is entitled, Walk With Me. Join me in prayer, please. Loving Spirit of Light, help me to see your presence in my life. Help me see your divine connection through this day. Walk with me as the day unfolds and bless me when I lay down to rest. Help me to recognize when you speak to me through the voices of friends. Help me to see you manifested in my own words to others. May I be a blessing to others as you are a blessing to my soul. Help me to see your love. Help me to walk in your love. Help me to know that I am love. And so it is. In the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Amen. And our gratitude today is I am grateful for that your love blesses me. <clears throat> so I had um, interesting conversations with people this week. People are feeling disconnected. Does that ever happen to you? So what are some things that, so disconnected, that's when I don't feel the presence of God, when I don't feel as if I'm being guided, or as if I feel as if I'm all on my own. That's what disconnected feels like. A lot of us slip into that here and there. What are some things in your world that, uh, generates that disconnected feeling. Is there anything? Yeah. A sense of deprivation. Simpa sense of deprivation. I'm deprived of something. Okay. I'm deprived of something. Doesn't lacking in something. Lacking I mean, in yeah. something. Yeah. Like I deserve something and I don't know what it is. And it didn't and it didn't come. And yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, it was a microphone. Um, there we go. She's armed and dangerous. Look out, folks. Um, what else? What else gets us disconnected? Carrie, over here. Things don't go as I planned. Things, all those darned expectations. Here's what I've got this plan, and there I'm doing this, and but something else. Uh, yep, that's it. Yep. What else? Yeah. Illness. Illness. Boy, that can suck it down. Get, get it really fast because we don't feel. You know, God's presence, I sh everything should be perfect. I should be perfect. Yeah. I kind of like the same thing, but overwhelmed by all of it. Overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah, I get overwhelmed, overworked, too many things on my list to do. I don't know about you, but I have a really long to-do list. I get some things accomplished, and lo and behold, there's more. But wait, there's more. You know, like a, an advertisement on TV. Yeah. There's always something more. It's like, wait, there's more. Yeah. 
I'm waiting for the microphone here. Kind of a combination of loneliness and without direction, aimless. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, uh, loneliness and no direction and lost. yeah. Yeah, lost. Yeah, lost. Feeling a little lost. Well said. There's more in the back. What causes you to feel disconnected? When my external world gets a little chaotic and I lose focus on my grounding. Chaos. And away the chaos. Yeah, chaos. Oh boy. And we got a lot in the world right now, don't we? Fear and doubt. Fear and doubt. They're the biggies. A lot of stuff happening that creates that fear, right? I feel most disconnected to others based on language and vocabulary. Ah, oh, language and vocabulary. So you're not feeling heard? Are you? <clears throat> so it, you could use any particular word, but if the concept that is attached to that word is different to someone else's mind, you might prefer not to use the word at all. Gotcha. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, what gets me down is being discouraged. You know, you go, 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 and then it's like, get discouraged. Um, here's one. Being hyper-vigilant. Being on edge. What's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? I may be coping just fine with things, but I'm on edge. Well, that can disconnect me not only from other people, but from divine source as well. <coughs> Aggravated. Do you ever get aggravated, especially with people that you love? <laughs> oh, you two laughed too fast there. <laughs> it was suppressed. It was suppressed. <laughs> Suppression, that'll do it too. Um, frazzled. Frazzled can make me feel really disconnected. So what are some things? Let's, let me just share a few thoughts with you. Because <clears throat> we know this, we know this, but when we're disconnected, we don't know this. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. Be strong and be courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Well, we know that. That connection is never severed. You could never do anything that would sever that connection. You can't. You can't. We feel disconnected because our focus shifts. And we shift out of the focus of that connectedness. True? True. <clears throat> Let's see. Psalms chapter 16, verse 8. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. We choose in. We choose it. <clears throat> Psalms chapter 73. I'm going to read 21 through 24. <clears throat> See if this doesn't ring true for you. <clears throat> when my heart was embittered and I was pierced within, then I was senseless and ignorant. I was like a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I'm continually with thee. Nevertheless, I'm continually with thee. Doesn't matter how discombobulated we get. Thou hast taken hold of my right hand. With thy counsel, thou wilt guide me. And afterward, receive me into glory. But for the here and now, we have guidance. We have that connection. <clears throat> we do. It's there. Uh, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, not 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, John chapter 15, <clears throat> chapter 4, Jesus is saying, abide in me, abide in me, that means live, live, where do you abide? I abide in uh, my house, well abide in him, abide in me, as I in you, he is abiding with us. <clears throat> And then he goes on and talks about vines and branches. If you abide in me, 
Verse 7 now. My words abide in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. Hello. We forget. Because it's so easy to get discombobulated and disconnected. Oops. Sorry, Lila. So what are some things that we can do? Okay, we know that intellectually. We got that. What are some things that we can do that will help us reconnect? What do you do to reconnect? Pray. Pray? That's a big one. That's a big one. Pray. Now, there's no wrong way to pray. If you just go, "Ah, God hears that and understands that, translates that. You know, uh, the Holy Spirit is there to, to translate our feelings that we don't even have words for. It's just open up. Prayer is that opening up to a uh, greater source, that which is greater than us. What else? Sing and dance. Sing and dance, yeah. yeah. We've got some singers and dancers up here too. Yeah, sing and dance. It's really hard to stay stuck yeah. when your body's moving. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Up here, Sandra. Sandra. I have a close relationship with Father God. And when Father and God and I got together this several years ago, it's been a family connection always. Always, it's always there. I and mean, any connection, anything that I need, anything that I don't understand, I go to Father God. There you go. That's just just why reach it out. My, he's my buddy. And then he teaches me things, and then I'm really glad he did teach it to me. Yeah. He let me screw up. So I've seen that didn't work really well, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> you know, A lot of us can relate to that one. Yeah. Which is why we used the song this morning, Reach Out and I'll Be There. Yeah. Reach out. I'll be there. He'll be there for us. We forget. We forget. What are some other things we can do? Meditate. 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 Breathe. 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 Oh, my Lord. This is such hard stuff, I know. <laughs> Mindful breathing. What else? I seek out someone who can teach me. Oh, learn something new. Se- seek out a uh, teacher. Learn. Learn something. That's a good one. What else? When I observe that I'm being fearful or blocked, I remember who I am. I remember that I am one with God and I feel lifted. Yeah. Mindfulness, bringing yourself awareness into that. What else? Yes, behind you. Or when I bring myself into the present moment by closing my eyes, taking a breath, and saying, I am here. I am, I am here. right here. Well done. Well done. What else? Mine is an embrace release type thing. I go ahead and embrace where I'm at and feel the whole feeling and realize that nothing really stays. And then I, once I fully embrace it, then I can release it. Then you can let it's it like go. It's like taking a breath. So, okay, my frustration, my you know, anger, my whatever. <sighs> yeah. Relax and let it go. And allow my consciousness to shift it because it's always shifting anyway. Yeah. And dance, sing, do whatever. It's something, and it's going to change anyway. Right. And just realize that I'm in the process of continuous change. And it's not permanent. So yeah. Don't, don't worry about it. The law of impermanence. Yeah. This too shall change. Yeah. Doesn't matter whether we try to hang on to it or not. Yeah. <laughs> Good try, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I always try to step out and find something to be grateful for. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Gratitude's a big one. Really big one. Big one. Big one. Big one. It's a beautiful conscious choice. I like to grab and see nature, put my feet in the grass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. be in nature. Yep. My favorite thing is balancing rocks. Yeah. You've seen my pictures of rocks on. You know, you can't be in a disconnected, negative state of mind and balance rocks at the same time. It won't work. I like knocking them down, so maybe I can find You want to call me on you and the dog. I'll balance a rock and the chill knows it. It's funny. Yes, go ahead. I like that sneak in the art room and paint. Sneak into the art room and paint. That'll do it. Be creative. Creativity. Anything else? Here's one. Be kind to yourself. 
Ah, oh, what? Yeah. Kindness to ourselves. We forget. Darn. Yep. Um, we do, sometimes we do uh, body swaying, you know, where you kind of move your hands in a, in a figure eight or an infinity symbol and you sway your body back and forth. That's a really good way to, to just allow and let go and center and be here, which opens that door to that connection. Um, getting a shower. <laughs> Get a shower. Having a bad moment. Get a shower. Something about that water washing over just really, really helps uh, reconnect, doesn't it? Write it out and burn it. Yeah. You ever done that? Yeah. Powerful. It's kind of like what you were saying about embrace it. Yeah. When you write it out, you just, there's no right or wrong, good or bad. You're not a bad person for experiencing what you're experiencing. And then when you burn it, you let it go. Well, you you, you like can see it. It, yes. it, it, yeah, you you put it in the fireplace though. <laughs> Do you have a fireplace at your house? Or a fire pit? Or a fire pit? <laughs> well, you could use it for your writing out and throwing, it, burning it in the trap with supervision when you're when you're a younger person. Put it in the microwave. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki's up here shaking her head going on. Visit with a friend. Have a conversation with somebody who is uplifting. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody who's a downer, Debbie Downer? Yeah. Find somebody that's uplifting and talk to them. You know, there's some people in this world that it doesn't matter what's going on in the world, they're going to have a cheerful tone in their voice because that's who they are. Find those people. Reach out to those people. Say, hey, how you doing? You don't download on them. Yeah, bring them down. No, don't bring them down. No. You write your letter and let it go and then call somebody and say, hey, what's going on in your world? And they'll tell you something beautiful and happy and wonderful and then you're better, right? Yeah. Right. We're always connected. It's our awareness that gets disconnected. Mm -hmm. It's our insights, our awareness, our perceptions get clouded and disrupted. So when we are connected in, reconnected in, you're more connected in now probably than you were when you came in because we had a, we've had a lot of laughter. Mm -hmm. We had songs, we had laughter. Um, the interesting thing about feeling connected is it creates this beautiful balance we're peaceful and powerful at the same time. We're humble and brilliant at the same time. We're strong and gentle all at the same time, simultaneous. We're aware and we're also able to allow things to be as they are. We're at ease and ready to go. We're curious and content at the same time. We have this beautiful balance that allows us to take whatever action is necessary and good and right and pure next, and we'll know what it is. And when we're in that balanced state of being, that's when we hear that divine guidance. When we're not connected, we don't hear that. We think we're alone. We think we're lonely, we think we're lost, we think we're afraid, we think we're challenged, we think we're overwhelmed. But when we're connected in, we're not. If I've got too much on my plate, I'm just learning this. If I've got too much on my plate, I have the right to say, hmm, I'm done. Thank you. No, thank you. Because I can let go of people pleasing and go back to pleasing self in alignment with spirit. And that's different. That's a whole different thing, right? So when we're in this aligned state of being, we're powerful. And with that power, we have the power of choice. When we're being driven by being overwhelmed, or we're being driven by being anxious, or we're being driven by being fearful, we don't really have choice in the matter anymore. Our choice has been taken from us. What's the first thing God gave humanity? 
choice. Choice. Second thing he gave them was clothes. <laughs> and they chose to wear them. So what do what do we want to what do we want to choose for ourselves? It's a choice. And sometimes we feel overwhelmed or we feel disconnected to the point where we don't feel we have choice. When we notice that, that's the key. That's the moment when awareness can take place. And then we have a choice of going out in nature or calling a friend or uh, whatever it is, sing, dance, whatever it is that reconnects you to spirit in your way, reconnects you to your mind and your heart in a cure, clear and pure way. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. So today we have um, a guest who is going to do our guided meditation for us. I'm delighted to uh, introduce you to her. Uh, <clears throat> she's had, let's see, they came from California, Florida, uh, I can't remember the other places. Kansas. She has Kansas, Texas, Nebraska, Nebraska, Alaska. Alaska, Alaska. Okay, Phil was born in Alaska, by the way. Fort Worth yeah, State. Yeah. Um, she studied. Uh, she has studied uh, shamanism. Um, she's interested in healing modalities. Uh, she has done spiritual uh, uh, coaching with people. And so I'd really like you to give a wonderful welcome to Darlene Thomas. Please come on up, Darlene. Get in the back and close it. Turn the lights down. Please. Alrighty. Come on. I'm going to do a guided meditation. So if you just take a few deep breaths and relax your whole body, let yourself be at peace. Take another deep breath. Feel yourself just relaxing. And in your mind's eye, visualize a, a, a hallway. And in that hallway, there's a door. And outside that door, a pathway that leads up. Notice all of the beauty all around you. Look at all of the colors, the scenery as you walk up the hill. And when you get to the top of this hill, you turn to your right, and you see the most beautiful, pure white cloud. And you stand in front of this cloud and two angels appear, reaching out their hand. You take their hand. They ask you if you're willing to come inside. And inside this beautiful, beautiful, powerful, soft and gentle cloud is a pure, divine, unconditional love. This love has such beautiful, calming energy and the angels invite you to lay down and just allow yourself to feel all this love inside you, letting go of all the hurts, the past, physical pain, mental pain, struggles, lies, people that have hurt you and cheated, all of the abuse you have taken in your past, all the age groups of yourself, Circle around you and just allow yourself to unite with yourself totally from infancy to the now, feeling this healing, unconditional, divine love. Feel that energy. Feel the experience of just being your authentic self. Feel the love tingling, just bubbling into a joy that it's been so missed. Feel that love filling your whole being. It's an unconditional love from Great Spirit. Let the experience fill you. Take 
taking another deep breath, knowing you can come here at any time and refill your being, reunite with your totalness of self. Take another deep breath of this pure divine love. And the angels reach down, you take their hand, and you sit up and you stand and again feel the awesome feeling of this unconditional love. And they escort you back out of the cloud you find yourself standing on the pathway. You turn and thank them. Thank the cloud. Thank yourself. You take another deep breath and you look to the left and you see this beautiful, beautiful pool of water. Notice the color. And before you appears a lotus flower and it isn't open yet and then all of a sudden the petals begin to unfold and as they unfold you look into the center pay attention to what you see is it a part of yourself that's unfolding is it an object a color allow yourself to receive the gift the lotus has for you And again, thank the water, thank the lotus and the beautiful gift you've received. And you turn and you walk back down the pathway, coming to close to the door that you came through. And before you is a treasure chest. It has your name on it. You're very curious what's the one inside. And as you open it, Maybe it's something that you're now ready to receive, or it's something old that is reappearing, but it's your gift. You thank the treasure chest, you close it, and whatever this object was, you take with you, and you come back through the door, down the pathway, back into this room, into the here and the now. Feel your feet on the floor, feel yourself balanced, and filled with pure love. Anybody want to share? There are questions? That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. The um, first gift that I got was a butterfly. Good. And it was uh, very light blue. It was really different than the pretty. And it stayed with me as I went to the treasure chest. And in the treasure chest, I was given an umbrella. Hmm. Okay. It's, it was, um, it, it felt like it was something um, protecting. It was guarding you, yeah. And the blue to me is, uh, it's almost a royal blue butterfly as you've already come out of your cocoon, you were already expressing yourself and the blue is expression uh, also past lives and um, so you're rebirthing in a set in a sense uh, for self to express your creativity your words and the umbrella will protect you from any outside influences I feel That's very good. Thank you. you're welcome As the lotus opened, I received a, um, a golden flame, like, like mm. a candle flame. And when the 
treasure chest open, I received a dagger with um, the blade was like a flame, like it wasn't, I don't know how to explain that, it was like, um, like if you were to hold the dagger, it had the sheath and then the flame, or the, yeah, I guess the, the, the cutting part of it was like a flame, the same basic shape that was in the lotus. That's beautiful. To me, the golden is, is the ultimate. And the flame and the dagger, the dagger helps you cut through other people's stuff, uh, anger, other people's um, intrusions, if you will. But also the dagger helps you get to the point that you need to get to, to allow the fire within you to um, express itself. And um, the golden light is, a, to me, a higher sense of consciousness. A higher state of consciousness. So I feel that's very good for you. I, the lotus kept opening up and it, and it didn't stop. Good. I got smaller and smaller as it got, kept opening up and, and it occurred to me that you know, there was an emptiness there, but it kept opening. It kept, it, what was it? kept opening forever, so it was like infinity. Hmm. That was showing me infinity or something. Or something. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that. That's what it gave me the concept of infinity. And then the uh, uh, in the chest it was rope. <laughs> I don't know what the rope was for. <laughs> what color was the rope? What <laughs> color was the rope? It's just regular Manila, you know, fiber rope, kind of like you know, like you see on a boat. Uh, mm hmm. Well, ropes are, they put, pull things together. You are still opening up your, the feeling of infinity. Uh, you have a lot of past lives interwoven in the now. And to me, the rope is kind of trying to harness that for yourself. Because sometimes we get out there and, and then there's times when we need to pull it all in and be still and listen. And, but also allow yourself to continue to open up yeah. and enjoy uh, the infinity of it. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, in the lotus flower, it opened up, but there was nothing in it. And I just figured it, that message, it's about me opening up. Hmm. And then, Trust that. And then in the treasure tra chest was a turquoise necklace, beaded one. Good. To me, turquoise is, is protection. It's also a very soft stone, and it's on around your neck. To me, would for you would be protecting um, you being able to express your truth, speaking your truth. Um, there was one other piece you said. What was it? You said there was nothing in the lotus. It's it's like you've come. Oh, good. Because to me that is saying you are empty. Now you're ready to replenish yourself. So I would go back to that lotus in a week or so and wait for it to show you what it has to show you. And also trust yourself to be open to the new growth that is there for you now. Thank okay, you. you're welcome. I have lotus in my pond, or I did, until I got me the other day. Um, and so I just kept picturing the yellow styles in the middle, and then all of a sudden I saw this a penny. A pin? A penny. And a then, penny. Mm hmm A penny. Then I... Went to the treasure chest and there was like old scuba diving gear. <laughs> and I don't scuba dive, so I don't know what that was about. Like the old mask and uh, the tubing and everything. Well, to me, the scuba diving is to emotionally go inside yourself. And also, water to me is spiritual. And you can go either way, trust yourself on that, whether it is a spiritual journey that you need to breathe and go into and uh, allow to come back out even though it seems to be old maybe it's something old you need to really let go of and let the new come in and the penny 
it's like a penny making a wish to me mm -hmm. in some respects. Um, and you said that it, there was yellow in it. And it's like the balancing of the intellect and the emotion because of the water and the, and the emotion. So that's what I get with that. Wow. Did anybody experience anything with the unconditional love cloud? Nobody? Just peace. 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 Okay. Yeah, just peace. Okay. And I just would like confirmation on my gift from the treasure chest. I received a golden skeleton key, and I know that the key is represents wisdom. And I'm wondering if I'm supposed to be listening for my ancestors' wisdom. Uh, that question I would take into meditation again for yourself. Okay. But to me, the skeletons, it has to do with the past. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with letting go of the skeletons in your closet. Letting them be set free. Mm -hmm. So you're free. Your ancestors, to me, can be of help, but they can also be uh, limit you. So finding that balance within yourself would be the I would feel uh, the thing to do. In the native tradition, I I know it's important to listen to the the elders mm -hmm. and respect and follow that path. But in other cultures, you know, it's the same too. In others, it's not. And with it being a skeleton, it's almost like it's almost Halloween, and it's the time of things being scary. Mm -hmm. And it's like you don't need to be afraid of what skeletons in her, are in your closet. Uh, take the wisdom from them, but trust yourself okay. and what you get. Um, in the lotus, I got a mirror. It opened up to a mirror. Oh, I like that. And then um, the treasure chest was several different types of fabric and a crown. Hmm. I've worked with the mirrors before in self-esteem classes and teaching that, mm -hmm. and it's very, very power empowering. And I, uh, whatever it was that you were looking into the mirror, which is your soul, which is your being, which is your love, and being able to embrace that and move through life with that for yourself. The um, one more thing that was the what? So the fabric and the fabric. crown. The crown. Oh, I like the crown for you too because you're. It's like queen for a day, but it's more than a day. And the fabrics are the tapestries of your life, things that you've been through, uh, what you have woven in on a piece of fabric. Um, so it's taking all of your wisdom in the past and bringing it and showing your crown. You are of royalty. We all are. And it's being able to embrace that with the love that's within you. I like that. Thank you. Um, the cloud was a family reunion. All Wonderful. All my loved ones that have left. Oh, okay. Yes, it was very, very nice. Okay, good, good. So in the cloud, to me, it was like I was floating in a very soft and sweet cotton candy. Mm -hmm. it was the lotus opened, and it was a very bright, pearlized white light mm -hmm. that just shimmered. And then when I opened the treasure chest, there was a lightsaber from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Direct your light, for sure. And uh, the power is within you. That's correct, too. And there you go. And... Uh, the first part of that, with it being a reunion, um, that's also a reunion with yourself. And um, it, it feels like a real healing for you took place there, which is good. So honor that this week and really kind of give thanks to that, for that, for you. Anybody else? Um, the lotus I too also had it here. It was a silver mirror, but when I looked in it, there was no reflection. Okay. Okay, and then in the treasure chest was um, just this beautiful green color, just color, and I'm like, how do I carry this? And somehow or another, I managed to carry it. I don't know, but it, anyway. Good. 
to me, the green is, is uh, healing, growth, uh, expanding, and I feel because you couldn't see a reflection in the mirror, mm -hmm. it's through this growth, you then go back and look in the mirror and see what you see, because there's something within your heart that is really beginning to open up, and you'll see that beauty that's within you that will be reflected then. Well, that's so nice, because I looked at it almost in a negative way when I couldn't Don't see we it always? It's so, so easy to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, we'll I was it. worried about you coming in and out there because all these We don't things. make it easy. We don't make it easy. <laughs> the things we do for our folks online, right? We do it for you. Uh, let's do communion. If you have not yet, there's uh, individual communion cups at the back, on the back table. Mr. Phil, if you want to join us up front. Oh, hi, Delilah. You don't get communion. <laughs> you should be right there. But you probably buried it. Would somebody be willing to give Phil to bring Phil? Oh, he's found it. Here. Let's hope I can get this one open. The hardest thing you'll have to do is the Nine Fellowship. <laughs> Join us in prayer if you would, please. Loving Spirit of Light, as we take this into our bodies, help us to take in the truth of our connection with you. Help us to remain true to that truth. Walk with us. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. 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 Join us in prayer again, please. <clears throat> Loving Spirit of Light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life, all of it, and help us to drink in life with awareness, awareness of your presence, awareness of your guidance, and awareness of our mission, our purpose, our place. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Mm -hmm. This is sure making more noise today. I don't know why. It's because it's, it's rubbing on you. It was rubbing on you every time we moved. Hey. That's it. Thank you. Good thing I didn't have the chance to turn the camera on. <laughs> well, we've always been truly grateful. We've never had to make pe people feel uncomfortable about not giving. Um, and yet there's always been enough when we need things. So we just spent a little bit, little wad of money this week on security cameras. So here. I'll get those things put up here in a little while. Oh, <laughs> I'm not a good. Well, I tried to get it underneath there. So. Yeah, well, yeah, next time. In the meantime. <laughs> yeah, don't we all? Serenade. Yep. So to wrap it up. To wrap it up, remember, there is angel food cake in the back. And strawberries. And, and strawberries and gluten-free 
Uh, confetti cake. Confetti cake, yes. So, so if you want a snack, stop by. Uh, let's do let's do a energetic uh, circuit for the folks online. Um, rub your hands together real, real, really fast. Just get that energy moving. We're connected. <laughs> so bring that connected energy into your heart space. From your heart space to your left hand, left hand to your right hand, back to your heart space. This connects at that energetic circuit. And as that circuit is connected, you'll feel the energy in your hands. You'll feel the energy building between your hands. You can bring this energy then into your heart space. Let it fill you up, strengthen you. May your life be, be blessed, and we will see you next time. Say goodbye. Bye. And while I wrap up.